everyone. This is part one of a se upcoming series on how to make a basic game using the WPF format for C -sharp .net. So, please don't come here as a way of how do I get Visual Studio. It's pretty simple. You literally just gotta go to your web browser. You gotta type in Visual Studio and there's the downloads option right there. So just download it. You gotta get the right things such as the C Sharp development and .NET development. And once you're done with that, come back to this video. Now, as you can see, we're at this page. You want to create create new project. You're gonna want to have C Sharp selected here, right? And if you're like me, you would have this already in here but we're going to type it in, in the little search bar and you'll get WPF application now don't immediately click it click the one that says net framework trust me you, you'll like it so double click or you can click this little button down here that says next once you click it and for now I'm just gonna call this tutorial game you can add spaces, doesn't matter, but I'd say don't. Now you can create, but beforehand you can say, do you want to place a solution or project in the same directory? What version of .NET do you want to use? I'd say just use the recent one, 4.7.2. And here we go. You want to create your new project. And here's another reason why you're going to love XAML. It's because it shows you what you're going to make before it even makes it like you can click this start button and you'll see that's exactly what the window looks like except for this little toolbar toolbar at the top which is just meant like to be a designer so the first thing that we're gonna add is a canvas so come down here to line 10 I'm gonna type in a lesson symbol type in canvas alright then you want to close this off with a greater than symbol now you'll notice that this auto created a uh, less than symbol forward slash canvas greater than symbol. Well, now you're going to want to hit enter. You're going to go up. You're going to go here, but don't go outside of the greater than symbol. You want to click space. You want to type in X colon name. All right, hit tab, auto capitalized. And then you're going to type in game screen. It just helps it find it within the code here and then you actually want to type in focusable is true trust me I've had issues with this before don't forget it up next we're gonna create our first object that's going to appear on the screen our first object is just gonna be a basic rectangle close it off with greater than symbol but don't hit enter um, unless if you're gonna like attach something to the rectangle don't so go back within the greater than symbol for the first rectangle word. Then without typing in X, you're actually just going to type in canvas dot left 50 canvas dot top 50. You want to type in fill. Nope, not that one. Fill is red and it automatically gives you the color. It even shows you the little color thing right down here. And then afterwards, we're going to click space, and then we're going to say the width is 50, the height is 50, and now you can see if it would work. There should be this little square here. Don't forget it. Don't forget the equal sign. All right, so it should look like this on your screen. I'm going to zoom in for you guys on smaller screens watching this on phone for, in order to create a rectangle or just overall it should look like this canvas x name is equal to game screen focusable is true close it off rectangle canvas left 50 canvas top 50 fill the red width is 50 height is 50 and close that off with rectangle and then you're going to want to close off canvas All right now I'm going to drop this back down now up here at the top click main window dot example dot cs but before you do make sure to hit control s or go file save I just recommend you hit control s as 
you can tell if it's an edited um, file because let's say I can literally just delete this add it back in there's this little tiny symbol right next to the file name if you hit control s it saves it it's gone now here's where the actual coding starts up first you're going to want to declare a variable this is private dispatch timer and then we're gonna call it game timer is equal to the new dispatch timer as a function now if yours doesn't uh, come up as auto selected make sure you have using system threading tasks I've had situations where this happens before and it's annoyed me and I've had to go like through 30 Google searches in order to figure it out up next you're gonna create a new variable but private bool and we're going to say up key pressed, comma, down key pressed, comma, left key pressed, comma, and right key pressed. As you see, it, Visual Studio 2020 knew what I was trying to do, and so auto filled for right key pressed. Up next, come down here, make a new function. Well, make a new void. So private, void. We're gonna call this game tick. We're gonna say object. We're gonna call it sender. We're gonna then give it event args and that's equal to E. Then we're gonna fill in the function. There you go. Now come to the main window function where it says initialize component. All initialize, the only thing that initialize component really does is that when you hit the start button, it just opens the window. That's really all it does. Now, create a new line under initialize component and say game screen that focus. Don't don't say focusable. And it should say something like this, game screen focus. Afterwards, create two new lines and then you're going to want to say game timer dot interval is equal to from to time span dot from milliseconds we're gonna type in 20 this is just your little basic thing if you actually want to get like 60 frames per second exactly you're gonna have to take this into account and say like 16 afterwards come down make a new line game timer dot tick is plus equal to game tick and then just end it off do not put the function parameters there Afterwards, go down a line, and if you're lucky enough, it autofills, and it says game timer dot start. It's pretty simple, and that's your basic ticking mechanism just to make it run. But what's powerful about this is that you can set the interval to one milliseconds, which would mean that this application you're making runs one thousand times per second. Granted, you need a strong computer for that one, which is why I don't really say you should, so just leave it at 16 for now for a basic six, uh, 60 FPS. Now, go back into your main window.xaml file. Afterwards, you're going to want to come into Canvas, and you're going to want to type in key up. Now, type in keyboard up. Now, there's another function called key down, and do the same thing, keyboard down, and then now it looks kind of weird yeah because we just had to change the spelling because if you set this to be the same name as this so if you had key up is equal to key up the function just would get confused now save the file now click this and hit F12 on your keyboard it automatically creates the function within your C sharp file now do the same thing for key down and there you go now what we need to do is we're going to have to come in here we're going to have to type in if e dot key is equal to key dot let's say w now go down make the if make the if statement we're going to set up key pressed to true now just do this for every single other key Alrighty, so afterwards, now you just want to select all of this, copy, and paste it down here. 
in the keyboard up function. Now, you might be, you might be questioning why, but if you didn't know this, you can hold control and alt multi-line select and then you can just edit all of these lines at once and just set them to false so you don't have to go click this one click this one click this one click this one and there we go so that's the basics right there just to get the keys you might have to if you there's like a lot of keys to press you might get like 200 lines just to grab key press it now we're actually going to get to the movement section come back to main window.xaml go down to rectangle all right, and then you're going to say x colon name is equal to player. Pretty simple. Come back to your C sharp file. Then afterwards, you are going to want to say if up key pressed. We're going to do this. Do not autofill if this is what shows up because you don't want the game timer to stop. Another thing that you will want to do, all right, this is to make the game seem a little bit better, is you actually want to come down. I'm going to type in private float. We're going to say speed X and speed Y. And we're going to also have an, we're, then we're also going to have another float that says, that's called friction. But this one, we're going to put an equal sign. And we're going to, for now, just put this as 0.8AF. Now, we come down here. If up key is pressed, we're going to want to say speed Y plus equals. Let's come all the way back up here. And have another variable called speed and for now let's just call this two we're just gonna add speed to speed why now do this for all the other keys but if it's a or D make it speed X not speed Y another thing to remember is that if you do, if you don't want to go plus equals minus speed you can literally just go minus equals speed Now, after typing all of these out, you should have something that looks a little bit like this. Now, afterwards, we're going to come down here, and we're actually going to say speed x is equal to speed x multiplied by friction. Now, we're just going to do the same thing we're, by just copying this line, pasting it, and multi-line selecting Changing that, changing that to Y. Now that gives us friction. Here's where you might not exactly like things. So remember that you had it as canvas top and canvas left. This just means that if it's this way, the numbers are gonna get greater. This also means that this is just a number subtracting the distance from the top. So as you get closer, the number gets less to the point to where it actually will become non-existent if you're up against the top like this. Or if you're on the left like this, then it's just going to get rid of that. Pull it back over. I'd say put it in the center of your screen. Save the file. Remember which directions you have because that's very important. And then come back down to line canvas dot set left. We're going to have the player and we're going to say canvas dot get left the player then outside of that we're gonna add speed x just like that copy this line and paste it but multi-line select and change left to top change x to y but make that a subtraction problem now that should be it click the start button and what's gonna happen well if you press the keys on your keyboard, you should be able to move your little red square around, just like that. You also get these little diagnostic tools here on the right side. It shows you how much of your CPU is being used, how much of the allocated RAM you're giving Visual Studio is being used. And then you can also see this little red square moving around on your screen according to your key presses. Now, we did not put an if function if it's off. So, like... Yep, you can go right off the screen. Don't recommend you do it though. And because of our speeds, we can actually like adjust. There's friction, there's even motion blur if you catch it correctly. 
and then you can just close this application with the X button or there's this little stop button that looks like a square and yes you can come right back up here and type in different friction numbers the higher the number is besides one so if you have your friction number to be one don't do it please don't because that just means your character will never stop moving if you set it to zero you just won't ever move so you can even have it at like something like this don't recommend making that number that large though you can even set the speed to something ridiculous like 10 save the file hit start and then uh, just yeah your guy is gone now there he is again but no guarantees he's coming back i'm currently tapping my a button trying to get him back over here i have not seen him I'm holding it down now. Oh, okay, he's gone now. That was today's episode. If you guys have any requests, please leave them down in the comments. I will make sure to read them. And I will see you guys later in the next episode.